Broadcasting live. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, everybody. It's Thursday night. It's Thursday night. We're here. You're there. Seven o'clock. It's Bible Discovery Group, and uh, we hope you're able to join us tonight. So, and uh, those of you who are logging on right now, thanks for doing that. Please, so, please log on and like in the comments, just say hello, and so we that helps us know who else out there, and we love hearing from you and right. seeing your. Or your comments and your questions. Um, Absolutely. How's everybody doing? Surviving yet another wave, I guess, of our COVIDness that we have going on here in this world. Right. So let us know how you're doing, and um, yeah. log on and say hello. Um, and then also uh, next week, uh, Thursday night, of course, falls on Thanksgiving Day. So we yes, shall be not expecting all of you to log on on Thanksgiving right. night. So we will. Um, uh, be off that night so um, I might try to post a video that you can watch anytime that goes over this Genesis uh, 10 and 11 information yeah there's some but, really um, good information out there so we'll be, there's uh, a really good video by Bodie Hodge that I, I'm probably gonna post I was watching it in preparation so um, it's really good information yeah. and uh, I'll post that but that can be at your leisure you don't have to log right in that can be <laughs> something you fall asleep to after you um, um, have your Thanksgiving uh, dinner right. so, so, so but uh, we will not be broadcasting live next Thursday just to reiterate that um, probably not gonna finish Genesis 11 uh, oh look at that I made a typo this is Genesis 1 oh we're starting over <laughs> we're starting over. it's Genesis 11 okay one so through nine. for people who log on later they're gonna be like whoa, whoa I think yeah, that's the wrong video like what happened so <laughs> that's funny so sorry about Genesis. that I, I, I've looked at this thing a thousand we go times back how over. did I not catch that so that's we really want to do number one over because yeah. we just like it so oh, I don't see it showing really up crazy. here hopefully it's showing up there so anybody I haven't seen anyone log on yet no so one's Let's see, what see if you're all here. But usually people are logging on. Hoping you're there. Sweet under. So I don't see it. Nope, don't see it. Not sure if you're there. Uh, if you are there, let us know. And so there you are. There. Hi, Miss Catherine. You're the so, first one to log on. Catherine, yes. I want you to know <laughs> the screen was sort of like muted. And then when you came on, it lit up, literally, literally lit up the room. Up. Thank yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for logging on. Because cool we're like, uh, I'm not sure if this is working. Yeah. So. <laughs> and there's Robin. Hi, yeah. Robin. Hi, Robin. From, oh, Beans. good. You're at McDonald's tonight. That's good. Oh, that's awesome. That's better than having you sit in the parking lot. If you're just logging on, my bad. That's a typo. It should be Genesis 11, right. 1 through 9 tonight. So <laughs> We're not so going back sorry. to number yeah, 1. <laughs> so sorry about that. So Starting uh, over hi again. Hi, Angie. So, Angie. Angie, hi, Angie. Yeah, so, but here we go. Okay, here we go. go. Um, you'll recall that last week, chapter 10, we made it all the way through chapter 10, and now we're going to be left fortunate if we make oh. it through uh, the first nine verses. I, I couldn't find it over here, and now I know oh. why, because we have to... I have to Click the like and the share button. So, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so if you feel uh, feel so inclined, please take time to do that right now. Like and share so there we can we um, um, know uh, get the word out there to people. So yeah. um, that's why I'm like I can't find it on my page, and so I wasn't sure it was working. Sorry about that. Now we've got all of our. because I didn't I share think it. We yet. have all of our ducks in a row. Okay. So, okay. So speaking of ducks, there's that park we drove by today or oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh my gosh! In Cypress, California, there's a park, and literally people call it just Duck just Park duck now park. because it's this huge area that in the evening all the ducks were in for nesting, and they were, you, like, you couldn't walk. There were I don't know, like a hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of ducks, yeah. like one feet apart, like, and they were all laying down on the ground. It was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Marie says a chat is not showing up. Chat is not showing up. Hmm. Mm. Sorry about that. So Didn't know. I know. I'm trying to find it here too, Marie. So to I was up. having issues. <laughs> Chat's but, not showing up. Hmm. Well, we have a ton of information to cover. So while Gay's uh, kind of working on that part, I am going to uh, go ahead and kind of get us started. So just a quick recap. Uh, we went over all of the, uh, uh, well, it's, it's commonly called the Table of Nations. So, hey, Miss Carolyn. So it's commonly called the Table of Nations. And so we've, we're given all of this information, but um, 
as the commentator Sarfati puts it, um, that Genesis, Genesis 10 showed how the nations formed from Noah's already dispersed descendants, but it doesn't explain why they disperse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know all of these people groups were forming as families grew and 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 and, and sort of just kept naturally spreading out. Um, but but uh, th there was then then if all these people are descended from from Noah and and his sons and 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 their their wives, um, well, how did we get all these nations? Well, chapter eleven is going to provide the reason that right. people uh, started scattering all over the earth. And um, it explains a whole lot of human history, a whole lot of human history. So this is actually a very essential uh, uh, chapter or series of um, uh, accounts to understand. So recall, well, let's dig in. Let's just go ahead and jump in. How are we doing, Doc? Okay. Good. I don't see Marie in the chat, but oh. I see some chat, so, so we, we see <laughs> I was a few people. It was like a, out there, a mystery, so. like she couldn't see the chats yeah. for some reason. Sometimes if you're on your phone, you have to swipe right or left, left. and that shows the chat. So yeah. if you're on your phone or your iPad, you can remove the chat um, by swiping one way or the other, and yeah. you can make it show up by swiping the opposite way. So maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, so... So anyway, yeah, so we said last week that like Genesis like 11 chronologically happened before Genesis 10. Yes. Like we said like chron in chronology they were flipped. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, so anyway, I, it's noted by a lot of people. Some yeah. people see that as a another reason they don't want to believe in the Bible or something like that. Who but, knows what but, the, yeah. But because it's like, why would they put it in that order? Like, well, the same reason like you were said last week, you know, that like, when you watch some TV shows or even some movies, it's like it starts at present day and then it flashes back right. and tells you the story leading up to the scenes that it started with, you know. Um, or a detective show, like uh, like I mentioned last week, sometimes Gay watches old episodes of Columbo and the audience sees the crime perpetrated right. and then the whole episode is about watching Columbo unravel it and so that's the entertainment part. Right. But... but as we just said, chapter 11 is going to explain why we, we observe all these people groups. Right. Now we're going to see how they came to be. Right. So jumping into Genesis chapter 11, starting with verse 1. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. And, and I was fascinated by um, how one commentator was uh, very uh, keen to point out that in the ancient Hebrew, it is now, now the whole world had one lip and one kind of words. That's pretty basic, okay? Right. One lip and one kind one of words. One lip and one kind of words. Yeah. So it, it gets the point across. Everybody spoke the same language. Many commentators say that may have, in fact, been Hebrew. Right. We don't know. Okay, we don't know. So, hey, Miss Polly just Polly. Yeah. Yeah, so, so also it's not even just the same language, but uh, um, also the, um, the same dialect even. Right. That's why right. it was sort of worded the way it was worded, um, which makes sense because this was, was these are all descendants of Noah and his family, and they were part of the pre-flood population. Right. And there was only one one population of people, you know, from Adam and Eve all the way up to Noah. So right. there was one common language and even a common dialect throughout the whole world. Right. Um, right. Now all but eight of them were wiped off the face of the earth, but the thing that would have they would have carried off the ark with them would have been their language. The common you know? language, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, just a kind of a, a, a keen side fact is that as of 2017, that was the latest I could find. Um, at least some portions of the Bible has been translated into 3,312 different languages. Right. Okay, that's pretty amazing. At least some part of the Bible has been translated into over 3,000 different languages. Hey, Tammy. Tammy's and, here. And so, hey. <laughs> oh, hi, Tammy. So, um, and um, the complete Bible has been translated to at least 670 different languages. We've had some people tell us that they've gone to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. I think it's in Washington, D.C. Yep. Yeah. Museum it's in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And how 
how just how fascinating and how wonderful it is to look at they they have a copy at least a copy of each of the translations of the Bible and it's just stunning to look at this wall of, mm -hmm. of Bibles and realize how many people can read the Bible for themselves in their own language and how, how just how wonderful it is and uh, this as an aside hi Julie this as an aside um, Julie. Um, I think the first time that Gay and I uh, actually had the privilege of, of, of taking a vacation to Hawaii um, the Walmart there has the New Testament in uh, Pigeon, Hawaiian mm -hmm. Pigeon it's English. It's only New, New Testament? Yeah. Oh, okay. They, they have the Hawaiian yeah. Pigeon uh, uh, New Testament, and I, I cracked it open, and I, I loved it. I just it's loved really it. It's really cool to it's read it. It's so sing-songy yeah. and yeah. so pleasing to the ear, yeah. so I ended up buying it. So, yeah. um, and, and sometimes I just read it just for personal enjoyment, but, uh, but no, nonetheless, the whole Bible has been translated into 670 languages, mm -hmm. 3, 000, over 3,000 partial uh, translations, and yet, yet, um, the organization that officially catalogs uh, human language uh, has has uh, has enumerated uh, 7,099 distinct languages. Spoken around the world. Yeah, our current the current number. It, it current, that doesn't existing. that doesn't count dead languages and and languages that have, have current gone active extinct. language number. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But the Bible's only been translated into about half of those then Not three thousand yeah. yeah. three hundred twelve. So because um I know that uh, one of the major Bible translating organizations is called Wycliffe. Yeah. W Y C L I F F E. I think it is Wycliffe something like that. Yeah. And um. And we have a have an acquaintance that is works for Wycliffe, um, and part of the project he's primarily working on, I think it's him and his wife, um, is they're part of a team to translate it into sign language. Oh yeah. But in different countries, because yeah. like ASL that stands for American Sign Language. Right. So, just like there's different you know languages spoken. There's different sign language for all the different countries. Yeah. So anyway, so it's very interesting to think about that, like to translate the Bible into sign language. Right. You know, that's quite a project. <laughs> so so well, nonetheless, we've gone from one common language spoken only a few thousand years ago right. to over 7,000 cataloged languages today. Mm -hmm. And again... Because we adhere to the biblical timeline, this has all transpired in in less than six thousand years. So pretty amazing. So verse two, verse two begins, and we're going to break this apart as we go through it. As people moved eastward, okay, we'll stop there. Okay, that phrase "moving eastward" is reminiscent of Genesis chapter three, when Adam and Eve have, were were um, uh, banished from the garden okay and um, um, if you'll recall Genesis 3 23 says so the Lord God banished him Adam from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which they had been taken after he drove the man out he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming uh, sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life and again keep in mind this is post flood there is no more Garden of Eden. It has long since uh, been destroyed by the flood waters. But historically, we have the account that after Adam and Eve sinned, they were banished, and so they were moved. They, they, the, um, so on the east side of the garden, hence the idea that them moving to the east, um, they, uh, uh, it, it indicates uh, uh, something kind of interesting. The language eastward marks events of separation, separation in the book of Genesis. By this spatial term, the narrative also conveys a metaphorical sphere, meaning the people are moving outside of God's blessing. So, so when the Bible says that, uh, so people are moving eastward, they're, just, they're, they're, they're growing eastward, but the idea is, and they're also growing further and further apart uh, from God's blessing. Hmm. Very sad. Very, yeah. very sad. Okay, And we already saw that because we saw the whole incident with Ham and, right. and, and how horrific that really mm -hmm. truly was. 
And, and then we see, so people are moving away from God's blessing. Mm -hmm. So, and it all goes back to that sin of pride again. Yep. You know, pride. So, continuing on in verse 2. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar. Shinar, yeah. Shinar kind of holds a unique place in, in biblical, in the biblical, <laughs> in the biblical narrative. Okay. In the biblical narrative. Yeah. Say it like that. But biblical narrative. Yeah, I, I, I'm making up my own language. Says we're going to take it over to Talk 7, about Babel tonight. We're, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to take the known languages to 7,100 tonight. It's so, okay. So, okay. Yeah, Shine, Shinar is mentioned at least eight times in the Bible. And, and, and you can see the listing uh, three times in Genesis and the book of Isaiah. Book of Daniel, the Book of Zechariah, the Book of Shinar has a, a significance in the, the dispersing of the of the ancestral uh, people of, uh, of 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 the Hebrew nation of Israel, so it, it's important. But it also uh, is indicative of a place, a real place. Um, it 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 it's a, a word that means two rivers. Okay, so a land of two rivers. Two rivers, uh, closely related to Mesopotamia, and if you recall your uh, what is that? Probably your seventh grade world history geography. Yeah, if yeah. you recall your seventh grade world history, uh, uh, the Mesopotamia region is also called the Fertile Crescent. Mm -hmm. Many secular uh, anthropologists consider that the cradle of civilization. It indeed, because of the two major rivers that flow through that area. It is indeed a very, very fertile, rich um, uh, region conducive to civilization growing there. Mm -hmm. Okay, We are not saying that that's where um, um, the Ark landed necessarily because that was the, um, the uh, mountains of Ararat, which is just a little bit uh, uh, down from that area, or up from that, I should say. But it, it became a place where people migrated to. And it's not where the Garden of Eden was located either. Not, not because, we don't know. Because no that idea. was all destroyed, that geography, yeah. that was all destroyed in the flood. Right. So some people say, oh, the Garden of Eden was here in the Fertile Crescent right. area because the rivers were named, there's rivers named Tiger and Euphrates within the Garden of Eden right, as right. well. But these are not those rivers. They're it not was those all rivers. completely destroyed in right. the flood. But the people, um, you know, again, Noah and his family were descended from Adam, so they were familiar with the, the rivers. Yeah. So when people went to this area, they might have just named the rivers. Um, it reminded them yeah. of the rivers from before, or what they had heard of. Yeah. And so they just really named common. it after that. So it's really very common. common. Yeah. Like, why is there, like, you know, an, an, a Maple Street in every city? Yeah. Or, you know, every even little town, there's an elm and a maple. Like, right. You I know? Think <laughs> when we talked about stuff like that, uh, the most common street name in, in the entire United States is Park. Park Street. Park Street or Park Avenue. Mm. Okay. Hi, Lori. Good to see you. So hey, Lori. Genesis is your chapter. Oh, right. Okay, good. <laughs> then we're, then we're in your wheelhouse. Okay. All right. We're in a good so, spot. So uh, we'll go through that map. Okay, uh, just another map that verse 2 in its completion reads. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar, and they settled there. Uh-oh. Now we have a problem. Because what did God command them to do? Yes. Okay. God had commanded them to fill the earth. Fill the earth, okay. Be fruitful and fill the earth. He didn't say find a nice spot and settle down. <laughs> In, right in one area of the earth right, right? genesis 9 1 god blessed noah and his son sons saying to them be fruitful increase in number and fill the earth as for you be fr fruitful increase in number multiply on the earth and increase upon it okay the idea of being dispersed and 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 um there's more than just like find new real estate to occupy the idea was that Humanity was 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 instructed by God to disperse uh, for stewardship purposes. Uh, the idea was that humanity would 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 fill the earth um, so that they could take care of God's creation. So this idea of like, nope, we're gonna hunker down, we're gonna stay here because we like it, 
and, and it's it's a blatant act of rebellion against God's command. Right. Okay. And we're going to see with the uh, um, you can't you you can't rebel against God forever. He's his his way his will will be done. Right. His will will be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good reminder. Okay. Right. I and, mean, uh, he he wants to use us, and he wants to use people as his the way of accomplishing his will. But if it is his will, and you know he asks you to do it, but you refuse or keep not listening, then he will find another vessel. He'll yep. find another avenue. He'll find vessel. another way. I mean, yeah. it's whatever he wills will be done. Um, right. That's why, of course, we have the most joy and abundance. And it doesn't mean we don't have trials, but you can still have the most joy amidst the, amidst the trials if you are following in God's will. Yep. So, oh, Lori and, Lori and Melissa are arguing over their computer screen. Well, I'm glad you're both watching. Okay. So, <laughs> this is but, actually some... Yeah. Yeah. So, I know. Everyone gets uh, to log in under their child's in, name now or their struggle. child knows the parent's <laughs> name because of all the homeschooling and everything that, you know, it's become... Um, the computer is much more used by the whole family. Right. But they might only have one or two screen names. Right. Well, <laughs> this is a significant uh, commentary um, or, or, or moment in, in history because uh, as... As Pastor Tina and uh, Veronica were teaching last night on Romans, and mm -hmm. by the way, um, Wednesday nights they're just starting the Book of Romans, so right. they, so they they were they began chapter one last night. Wow, wow, wow! If you if you if you want to dig into an amazing book that will benefit you beyond what we can describe, mm -hmm. Romans is the book to right. to to really dig deeply into. And um, as Pastor Tina and Veronica said last night, um, Paul like jumps in with a, a very bold statement about God desiring obedience mm -hmm. over uh, uh, even just action. Okay, so mm -hmm. these people undoubtedly were very, very busy settling, if you will. Right. Okay, hunkering down, making something mm -hmm. for their own uh, uh, their own enjoyment, but or their own their own use. But that's not what God commanded. Right. So never confuse busyness with obedience. Right. Okay. So yeah. So so this this idea of settling in that in that plane of Shinar, um, on first blush it sounds it, it sounds uh, nice, but or it sounds positive, but actually it it can be a, a negative time. Uh, what time? They start at seven. Wednesday nights at 7. Right. And they, Same thing, Bible Discovery Group. Right. If you guys um, are not a member of the Bible Discovery Group, you can always um, go to that page and uh, log or request to be a member and click on that. Yeah. And then we'll make sure you get approved if for some reason you're not getting approved. You know, send me a message or text me or something and I'll make sure. But Pastor Paul oversees oversees the Bible Discovery Group page, but we do have access to the administration. But it's a good idea because that way you can um, get notifications anytime they're going live, which they do um, two studies on Tuesday. They right. do one that's easier for people in the East Coast time. They do it at 4.30, oh, wow. and then they're going to do Tuesdays at 7, and then they do Romans right, Romans right now, Wednesdays at 7. Wednesdays, yeah. And then their Sunday service is a evening service, so we do... Yeah. Uh, we come and help them with that, and um, it's Sundays at 5 p.m. So if you're local, you can come down here to 8101 Slater Avenue in Huntington Beach. Sit in the parking lot with all the rest of us. <laughs> well, now it's going back outside. <laughs> we we're inside, yeah. but, you know, now with the current state of the COVIDness, we're yeah. going to be outside in the parking lot. So bring a nice jacket and a blanket, and we're going to have some heaters and stuff like that. But 5 o'clock on Sundays, um, and they stream it as well. So Yeah. So yeah. Romans is a great study. Um, many commentators, have, several very prominent commentators, have called it um, the jewel and the crown of Scripture, and mm -hmm. that's saying a lot. That's right. saying a lot. So right. all Scripture is 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 God breathed and is 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 useful for instruction, and 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 it's our duty, it's our responsibility to learn Scripture. But oh my goodness, Genesis, Romans. You are going to be on such a, a scriptural journey. It's it's awesome. So moving along, verse three. Again, we're going to break it down a little bit. They said to each other, "Who the people that were settling in the plain of Shinar, humanity that this this uh, group of uh, we don't know how large this population was at that time, 
Nevertheless, they were disobeying God, settling in the plain of Shinar. And they say to each other, uh, come, let's, okay, come, let's. And they're going to stop there. And they go, wow, that's a crazy place to stop. Hmm. It all makes sense. Okay, come, let's. Because when you start to say that, you're justifying your disobedience. Mm -hmm. When we start to say, hey, I got an idea. Hey, let's do this. I know what God <laughs> said, but this is going to work. Right. Okay, that's kind of what's going on here. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Psalm Psalm twenty one puts it so blatantly. Twenty one or two one? Two one, two one. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this a, my eye yeah. contacts are blurry. Yeah. So Psalm two verse one says, "Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles.'" Did you catch that? Did you catch that? The psalmist is talking about people rising up against rulers. But remember, in previous chapters, rulers are appointed by God. Right. Okay, there is no ruler that exists today that wasn't allowed to be there mm -hmm. by, by God's divine caveat or divine um, 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 ruling. Okay. Even the bad ones. Right. The bad ones came to be because humanity disobeyed. And, and took things off, and God's like, okay, this is not going to end well, but right. go ahead, knock yourselves out. Right. Okay? So, um, so, oops, there we go. So verse 3 that now continues on. Verse 3 says, uh, they said to each other, come, let's make bricks, let us brick bricks, in mm -hmm. other words, yep. and bake them thoroughly, burn to a burning. They used brick instead of stone, and tar for mortar. Okay, so here they go. This massive building project. They've established that they're, they're going to stay here. And so they are digging in, literally, literally digging in. Right. And they're starting to brick bricks, okay? <laughs> Make bricks, mm -hmm. okay? Bake them thoroughly. And, and um, interestingly enough, they still use these same techniques today in that same part of the world hmm. people are still making bricks hmm. by baking um, uh, the the soil and instead of cutting stones they're still making um, uh, bricks um, that way and then they're they were gathering tar hmm, tar to use as mortar which is very reminiscent of what Noah did to create the flood and so to create the flood <laughs> <laughs> no, created to create the, the ark to create the ark and building the ark in he preparation was, to the right he was told to remember he was told to cover it on the inside and the outside with, with it was pitch. called pitch yeah. which is tar but it's a it's a, a, a liquidy or a, 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 a viscous uh, a thick material. waterproofing yeah, as material as opposed to basically mortar, a, a which water. turns hard mortar, right mortar turns hard tar and and pitch uh, they they they're waterproofing but they don't get hard in one version I read it was called slime. Slime. Yeah, Ooh. that word was interpreted as slime, I but like that. most of the words are I like so it. like a gooey, thick substance that is up. actually water resistant. So yeah. it's like that silicone caulking yeah. we use now that oh, makes yeah. me think of, like you know, could be sort of slimy, um, or it's just thick and sticky. But then when it dries, I mean, it's waterproof, right? But it's still somewhat flexible. So, so. Flavius Josephus, so that's where his, uh, Nimrod, we talked about him a little bit last week in last week's study. That's Bad where his, dude. his Bad name dude. was mentioned, right? Yeah. But Nimrod is um, was con was sort of um, became like a very powerful person at this time, and it's attributed to him this whole idea of like he was the one instigating and initiating this idea of building the tower and having an an urban city instead of people right. dispersing and following God's command. Right. He was the one that we feel like, um, and many scholars feel like Satan was influencing Nimrod, you know, right. and um, appealing to a sense of pride and like, wouldn't he want to, you know, try to build an empire basically and be in control of all these people. So, so yeah, Flavius Josephus is the quote we have up right now. And it says, now it was Nimrod who excited them to such an affronted contempt, contempt of God. He was the grandson of Ham, the son of Noah, a bold man, and of great strength of hand. 
he persuaded them not to ascribe it to God as if it were through his means they were happy, but to believe that it was their own courage which procured that happiness. Now, that's an mm. archaic way of saying Nimrod, the grandson of Ham, and we know what troubles Ham brought, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, he was this, the, 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 um, a bold man. And that's not a positive in this case. Right. Flavius is using a word to describe somebody who is arrogant, we would say a, a tyrant. We would say tyrannical today. And great strength of hand is not a positive attribute. It's somebody who uh, rules with an iron fist. These are negatives right. in, 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 in uh, the language that uh, Josephus is using. Okay, And he persuaded them to not to ascribe to God, not to say, hey, God told us to do this. But he's like, we're going to do it this way, and, and this is going to be better, and we're going to like it. Right, to okay. basically take the glory yeah. for yeah. the way things were, if they were having a successful life or things were working yeah. out well. Instead of thanking God for that, he, they, he convinced them to say, well, you know, we're pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> it's because we're good, yeah, right. to take the credit for, for that. Right. So um, Sarfati made an interesting point. He says that that Moses, as an editor of the book of Genesis, he um, he explained at length. He explained how these bricks were made for the benefit of the the Jews uh, hearing this story, because uh, Israel, that region of the world, mm -hmm. is just just filled with stone, and people would use stone to build. So the idea of Forming bricks is kind of a foreign idea, but remember, they're on the plain of Shinar, okay? Plain, flat region. Plains are generally formed by uh, uh, abundant water and silt and mud. So mud would have been abundant. Stones, not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, stones more from hard rock, like granite type. Right, you know, right. Um, rock. So. Yeah, Carolyn uh, says self-reliance and defiance of God. Exactly. Ooh, that's good, Carolyn. I exactly. like that. That's really good. Yeah, self-reliance and defiance. Yeah. Right. In um, Henry Morris's commentary, the Genesis record, I like what he says. He says that um, Romans 1, 18 through, 8, 1, 18 through 32 graphically describes the resulting moral and spiritual deterioration of Nimrod and his followers. Willingly, leave, willfully leaving the knowledge and worship of the true God and Creator, they began instead to worship the creation. And then it's credited that soon this soon led to pantheism and polytheism and idolatry. So how much of this new system of religion came by direct communication with Satan himself, we do not know. But there's abundant evidence that all forms of paganism have come originally from ancient Babylonian religion. Quite interesting, eh? So Quite Nimrod's kind of like credited for being yeah. the founding father of paganism. Right. And all these Babylonian religions. Bad stuff. Bad mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah. Not a good dude. So, so our sin nature just keeps coming through in the human race and right. humanity. At least God said he would never, you know, uh, wipe us all out by a flood again. But, right. but anyway, verse 4 says, Then... They said, come, let us, that same phrase again, hey, let's make bricks. Now it's, hey, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the whole face of the earth. Oh. As someone told us that oh. we should do. <laughs> yeah, but what did God say back what? in chapter 9? Yeah. What did he say? Multiply and, and spread. Three and, and, fruitful, and multiply, and fill the fill earth. Fill the earth. Which meant go throughout the earth. So otherwise the face of the we earth. will be scattered. Satan. So this is a Nimrod is, again, yeah. directly contradicting yep. God. Satan is always, always, always in right. direct opposition to what God uh, declares or or instructs us to do. Okay. Right. Same, it's We've seen this so many times right just in these these uh, 11 chapters of genesis mm -hmm. did god really say right oh come will that really happen here we go again right oh scatter no 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 no. we don't want to scatter we want to stay together we stick together and we're gonna we're know? gonna do this amazing thing 
We're going to make a tower that reaches to the heavens, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did um, somebody was telling us today? To maybe make it a little higher than the floodwaters? Yeah, that's one of our conversations today. Somebody was saying that, like, maybe they were trying to make something that would be their refuge in, in case God would flood the earth again because they would have all had remembrances or had been told about the flood if they, you know, they had lived through it or their grandparents had lived through it. But, but and I said, too, that that's one of the things um, was that um, tar substance is, was referred to as the bitumen again, which is like a waterproofing substance. Yeah, yeah. And they hadn't heard that before. I like Henry Nor Henry uh, Morris has a cool quote about Satan. He says, Satan is notoriously a corrupter rather than an innovator. Yep. So he likes to take whatever God said and twist it, have a, have a little truth in there yeah. that is, you know, correlates with what God said, but then just ask a question, plant the seed of doubt, and then twist the answer just enough so that you're heading off, like we said, heading off eastward yep. and no longer in the, the path of God's will, just heading, veering off to the east. And that's when, you know, we are going to get further and further away from what God has truly said and what his will for our lives really are. Exactly. So one commentator put it this way, did the people already right. doubt God's promise never to flood the whole earth again? Mm -hmm. Was a tower reaching the heavens an attempt to escape the flood? So in verse 5 it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord came down. So it sounds like, you know, the Lord coming into the garden when Adam right. and Eve are hiding. It's very, very reminiscent of that same idea. I mean, God saw the tower. He, you know, knew what was going on. But he intentionally came, like, just like he came to meet Adam and Eve in the garden. He intentionally came down to see. Yeah. I think it's the 17th century commentator, Matthews. He put it this way. And I, I just... I just love the way he says this because it's so powerful. Irony is nowhere any stronger than in this verse whose sad message shows the escapade of building this tower that reaches mm -hmm. the heavens for what it was. A tiny tower conceived by a puny pan and attempted by pint-sized people. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bit harsh, eh? Right. So God himself comes down to see this, okay? And again, keeping in mind what that means, just like God walking through the garden, okay? Mm -hmm. um, God knows what's going on. But the, the way that this, this verse is worded, you just get that idea. The God of the universe who spoke the heavens into existence, who spoke the sun and the moon and all of the stars. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we, we did that wonderful study on how massive some of these stars really are yeah he spoke them into existence and now he looks at nimrod's at nimrod and his hench people <laughs> his henchmen right furiously baking bricks to try and build a tower that's going to be higher than the flood waters <sighs> really <laughs> really right so a tiny tower conceived by a puny plan by pint-sized people and the idea of there being People of so little faith in God that that despite their pomp and their arrogance and their their uh, uh, self uh, aggrandizement, mm -hmm. they they really were just little ants, right? In God's economy, if right. you will. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the potential was there. God loves every person that He's ever created and breathed right. life into. But they've willfully chosen to disobey him. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand that. So, um, so then a statement is made in verse 6. A powerful statement is they made. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So God makes this statement. If they set their mind to this, they will become so fixated on this that they will do whatever they want to do, which is not what I want them to do. This, right. this is in disobedience to my perfect plan. And it's not because God is being a tyrant. Oh, right. no, 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 no. It's because God sees so far beyond what our little minds can see that he knows this will bring about human destruction. 
right. by our own hand. And but he knows that 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 he knows us. He created right. us. He knows what humanity is capable of, and he knows nothing will be now is nothing absolutely impossible to us. No, we're not God. We're not God. But no, no project that we can conceive of will be impossible. Right. And we'll find new and creative ways to destroy ourselves. Well, and God, you know, knew what happened to the human race before the flood. I mean, the reason he brought the flood was because yeah. humanity had grown so far from him, had grown so prideful, had, you know, interaction with demonic beings, yeah. um, you know, had totally been disregarding yeah. his design and purpose for their lives yeah. and they were the you know, dna was being corrupted i mean they were just getting more and more corrupted remember it said that every thought of every man is always evil yep and that is why god brought the flood and so there had to be another plan b i mean he had to have, he had to do something different for this post-flood world or similar thing would right. have happened i mean he the, the desire of our heart tends to be evil so yeah. So God acknowledges the problem. It's recorded in history for all of us to understand. God, at least get a glimpse of God's understanding. And then God speaks again, in, or continues speaking in verse 7. He provides the a remedy to this, this pointless uh, attempt to be disobedient to him. And right. he says... In verse 7 he says, Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Right. Right. Let us go down, and this is a, this is a, a a a wonderful reminder of the Trinity. Right. Although the, the word Trinity is not used here, we God, in His perfection of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, has come. Let us go down and conf confuse their language. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right. observing this and 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 acting as the Trinity, as 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 God is is. Uh, he says, let us confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Okay. Um, and there's, a, there's kind of an interesting, uh, uh, it's not a pun, but there's an interesting twist on the original uh, uh, language as it's recorded in, in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The exact word uh, confused or the form of the word confused in this passage is nabla. Uh, and the pronounced consonants of the word nbl or nabla, n n b l, right? Nibla. 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 Are the reverse order of the word for, for brick. brick. Yeah. Okay. Consonants. Remember, Hebrew doesn't have um, uh, vowels. vowels. Okay. So Nibla. Nibla. the people Nibla. are busy <laughs> building bricks, making bricks. Right. And God says, "We're going to confuse their language," and the word choice is the exact opposite. Right. The way the, the word is spelled is right. the exact opposite. Right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and it, and Sarfati goes on to say, this is certainly not coincidental. Coincidental. It shows that any human endeavor that contradicts God's will is an utter exercise in futility. Right. Please. Right. We got to take that to heart. There's so much crazy going on in our world today. And, and maybe there's always been crazy, but because of um, our ability to communicate around the world instantaneously, right. we're aware of crazy. Right. Okay. There's so much crazy going on that we are aware um, of, of all these things that are in direct opposition to God's will. Mm -hmm. And it is an utter exercise in futility. Right. No matter how noble sounding it might be, no matter how ambitious it might be, no matter how much time, effort, money, uh, brain power is, is, is exerted doing it, if it is contradictory to God's will, it is futile. It will not, absolutely will not succeed right. in God's time frame. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to fall tomorrow, but it Ultimately, it will fail. And we see it all over the place. Right. I think it's interesting that that, that wording about brick and confuse, you know, because what are, what are bricks? I mean, they're 
they're hard, they're an obstacle, they're an obstruction. So it kind of makes sense, you know, yeah. that that the word could be, you know, flipped around, sort of like a mirror word, but <laughs> mirror mirroring um, the idea of confusion. Um, how how would they be confused? Because well, the language is being all of a sudden there being so many different languages was an uh, was an obstruction to their communication. Right. So it was a brick. It was a brick wall in right, their right. ability to communicate one with another. I mean, and like I was saying before about, you know, that mankind tends towards evil and had already gotten so evil that God brought the flood. I mean, the point is that evil does exist. Yes. Satan does exist. Yeah. Hell exists. Evil exists. And um, it's just important, as especially as Christians, because we have the truth of how to conquer evil, how to overcome Satan and all of his minions they are powerless compared right. to the blood of Jesus Christ um, so we are you know needing we need to like educate our own you know saints the Christians but right. that evil is real and that does yes. exist we don't do ourselves any favors by trying to just focus on like God is love and God is you know which is true <laughs> you know but focusing on you know, like Jesus and, and just the, the loving part and the mercy and the grace, which is all very important. But if we don't n acknowledge that evil exists, we're targets. Yeah. And we're easily led astray. We're easily um, thrown off, you know, the path of God's will. So Absolutely. it's just important. Um, we were just in a study that we were leading called um, When to Walk Away, um, Learning How to Follow Jesus' Example. In walking away from toxic people um, and by Gary Thomas and we were just leading that small group and there's a really great book it's got by the same name and uh, Gary Thomas is the author um, but one of the chapters he said you know it really struck me because he said you know we especially like as parents you know you talk to the, your children about how God is loving and how Jesus loves you and all of that is very good but he said I really feel like we're not preparing our kids for life in the world oh, right by not really telling them that evil does exist and they how to be prepared, you know, how to lean on the Lord and over and fight the evil that's going to come at you because there is evil in this world, you know. Right. Um, Satan did fall and Satan did take angels with him and all that. So, right. and his goal is to to get as many people to follow him, like Nimrod here. Yeah. He wanted as many people to be under him. So Nimrod was completely under. Um, Satan's, you know, influence, you know. So, so God's solution, he said, let's confuse the language um, so they will not understand each other, okay? And lo and behold, look what happens in verse 8. Verse 8, so the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. So, amazing. One simple, or, or just, uh, just one thing, just confusing the language, mm -hmm. and because of the pride and the arrogance and, 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 and our own impatience and whatever, people by necessity started scattering because they couldn't understand uh, former family members and, and so on and so forth. So by necessity, they started scattering. Right. What an interesting solution, but, it, but this is God's will, and it worked, mm -hmm. and it worked. That's what he did. Now here's an ironic... Um, uh, finding uh, just an observation that, that we find all over the world. But um, literally, to this day, all over the world, you find massive pyramidal structures. Mm -hmm. um, very, very, very different cultures all over the world continue or continued to build uh, towers of some sort, okay? Unfortunately, well, literally all of them, the vast majority of them, uh, were used for very, very non-godly purposes, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, they, they, they worshipped little g gods there, but not, not the god of, of the Bible by any stretch of the imagination. Horrific things happened in most of these tower structures. Right. But we literally find them all over the planet. Right. We find it's just kind of an aside, an interesting aside. Right. 
Okay. Right, that video that I'm going to share for next week um, has a really interesting um, archaeological find, and it shows it from like a helicopter's point of view mm -hmm. and shows just how it was square and, you know, yeah. how it was very, um, very much like they feel like it might have been where the Tower of Babel was. There's no tower there now, but right. there's a pool there, mm -hmm. and you can still see from the top that there was a, right. a square structure that used to be there. So right. very and interesting. And Lori's comment is that Satan is a smarty pants. Yeah. He's a, yes, he is incredibly intelligent, not to be underestimated, <laughs> but right. he, is, he is a fallen angel, and he is subject to the, the, the authority given to the saints through the Holy Spirit when we um, um, are followers of Christ, mm -hmm. that we have to understand that. Mm -hmm. okay. So then verse 9 tells us... That is why it was called Babel or Babel. In some areas they pronounce it that way. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. So this is such a significant point in human history. Okay, so now we understand why. So last week we talked about who... Now we talk about why. Why are all these people groups arisen? And it's because of our disobedience. Right. Yet again, right. our disobedience. And so God scatters the people over the earth. And we still haven't stopped disliking each other. Right. Okay. Despite the fact that we, it, the Bible clearly shows right. that we are indeed uh, one family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that we are indeed all descendants of, 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 of uh, Noah and his sons um, over something as simple as not being able to speak the same language. Right. We, we, we as, a, as, a, as a race, have become bitter enemies. Right. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Right. But, but we're all cousins. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> all cousins. Right. Yeah. Oh, just a quick aside. Um, because Babel sounds very much like Babylon, a lot of people assume that there's a tie-in. There is not. There is no tie-in. So, okay. So, um, just don't make that distinct or don't make that uh, a point of confusion. <laughs> Speaking of language, don't be confused. Okay. Babel and Babylon are not the same thing. So, the Tower of Babel, you would not expect it to find it. You would not expect to find it in the ruins of Babylon, just, just to be clear on that, okay? Mm -hmm. Gay wanted to talk about something very significant and related to this and very relevant for our time, for, for, for our uh, uh, fall of, of, of the infamous year 2020, right. okay? Right, so. right. So, I mean, as a couple of things, I mean, first of all, too, I mean, the um, scientists today looking at linguists, you know, who study languages, um, they, they really cannot... Uh, there's theories about where language originated, but they really don't have a solid scientific evidence of. They can't define it. They can't. They right. cannot find the origin of language. They cannot find also the origin of music. It just right. shows up in existence, right? right? It just shows up in the archaeological records and things like that. So, um, so the and the result of this event with God um, assigning basically d different languages. Um, and then having people disperse, which they would disperse according to those they could understand. So the language yeah. groups were formed, and the language groups dispersed, and that was all discussed, you know, in chapter 10. Um, and this is, I'm just actually representing some slides from Genesis chapter 2, or 1 or 2, where we talked about that we are all descended from Adam and Eve. We're all one race and one blood. So... Go ahead and go to the next one, um, and that shows that. Yeah, one race, one blood. So the biblical view of people groups, because there really is only one race, the human race, um, is Adam and Eve. Um, it's the references, some of the references are 1 Corinthians 15, 45, and then Genesis 3, 20. And then their sons and daughters are referenced in Genesis 5, verse 4. And then Noah and his sons are in Genesis 9, 17 through 19, and other places, but that's where they kind of first talk about them. And then the people at the Tower of Babel are referenced here tonight in Genesis 11, 8 through 9, but also then in Acts 17, 26. Go ahead. Um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So that's referring to Jesus Christ yes. 
as the last Adam. And then Genesis 3.20, it says, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And then Acts 17.26 is where in the New Testament it says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So that's referring to what we're talking about here, yeah. Genesis and the Tower of Babel and the dispersion event. God, it's reiterated throughout Scripture that there is one race, the human race. Right. There are different people groups because God gave different languages, and then it all goes down to genetics. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So the dispersion of the people groups at Babel accounts for the differences of the various cultures around the world. It also accounts for the similarities of the various cultures throughout the time, like Dan was talking about the different pyramidal ziggurats and mm -hmm. pyramidal structures. The reason that exists in so many cultures, so we, this explains it. Um, like the similarities in megalith building based on advanced astronomical knowledge, which allowed the ancients to measure and map the globe and the similarities in myths and religions, including creation myths and globe, global flood stories. So all throughout the world, even in like primitive cultures, advanced cultures, they have like creation stories that are very similar, you know, and the elements in them are very similar. And we talked about that as we were going through the earlier parts of uh, Genesis and then the global flood stories as well. Dan talked about the Chinese characters right. and how the Chinese character for boat actually is like eight people in a boat yeah. and a great flood, you know, right. like a, a w water. So right. that is the Chinese character for the word yeah. boat. It's so, it's yeah. or flood or yeah, boat. Flood. Oh, flood or flood. So anyway, yeah, go ahead to the next one. So science done correctly and with an objective uh, mind or an open mind um, actually always always ends up confirming the Bible so it's always exciting as scientists um, we always say it's such a great time to be a scientist because um, it always confirms the Bible um, and these are just some headlines from some articles I just wanted to bring up that like this one is from 2000 so these are not very old I mean these are within the last decade or so um, this headline says um, Dr. Venter of uh, Rockville, Maryland, and scientists, uh, they recently announced that they had put together a draft of the entire sequence of the human genome and researchers, mm -hmm. and humans vary only slightly at the DNA level, and that they, only a small proportion of this variation separates continental populations or people groups. So DNA has pro proven by people who don't believe in the Bible that there really is only one race is the point of these uh, quick um, articles I'm going to just share real quick. So the, here's the biological problem with race. The genetic variation within each of the various ethnic groups of Homo sapiens, the ge genetic variation within a group or a kind is greater than that between the different kinds. So they've mapped the human genome and they've mapped it from all different what they call races, mm -hmm. but the variation within a race, population, or group is greater. There's more variation within a group of people, like Caucasians, for example, than between Caucasians and black or Asian or other, you know, Latino. So the idea that there's, w that doesn't match up with what they wanted right. in science for there to be different races, there should be variation between the People groups, go to the next one. So, but the genes that explain the phenotypic differences like hair color, etc., between populations only represents a tiny part of our genome, confirming once again that the concept of race from a genetic standpoint has been abolished. Right. So this is from an article in 2008. 2008, scientists have shown to themselves that there are is not there are not different races right from a dna standpoint all humans are one race homo sapiens there's absolutely no genetic or evolutionary justification for racial categories of humans this is an article from 
2011. The criteria that people use for race are based entirely on external features that we are programmed to recognize. So they are not based on internal or DNA features, they're just external things. So there really is no such thing as a literal white or black person, it says man. We are all shades of brown. High melanin, darker brown, low melanin, lighter or less brown. So there's lots of variation. So Adam and Eve, like this, uh, this little diagram shows, they would have had like say the, um, the gene for uh, darker brown was a capital A and a capital B and the gene for less brown was a, uh, lowercase a and b. And then over to the right, it shows that's how all these different combinations would show phenotypically, that just means showing on the surface, um, different shades of brown. Oops. So, and then the, here's an example of people, like in the family, there's a family there on the, on the left, you know, the husband and the wife, they look similar in their amount of brown in their skin, but you can see he has like blue eyes, but one of their twin daughters has darker skin and the other one is blonde hair and blue dyed and lighter skin. Right. That So they had those genes like Adam and Eve. So, and the little girl that is the blonde one, she got all lowercase A's and B's, you know? Right. Right. That's all that means. And then the other um, picture is also two sisters that if you were to see them, you would probably not assume they were sisters, you know, yeah. if you found them somewhere on the street or something. Um, so yeah, so, and that goes back to Acts 17, 26. Um, that and and he has made one blood of all the nations of men to, to dwell on the face of the earth. So we're all made of one, one type, one genetic. So we're almost done. We just wanted to give you some real world, uh, current examples. So this is a picture of my family. Okay, and my dad is there, sitting down there, um, next to my mom. My dad is Hispanic. My mom is not. <laughs> okay, and you can see that there's a lot of variation just within our family. Right. And um, our goddaughter, her father is Hispanic. Her mom is, is uh, from Scottish origins, and uh, she looks, she looks like she looks. She's a combination of both of them. Right. And then real quickly, we're uh, running a little bit over, but I just wanted to end with this. My sister recently did her um, her uh, DNA testing, and these were the results that came back. So according to to uh, uh, the testing. There were some surprises in there because we, we did not expect this at all. But there's actually Scottish and, and, and Irish uh, or English uh, uh, genes in my genetic makeup. Had no idea. Mm -hmm. None. However, after talking to a creationist geneticist, mm -hmm. it makes sense because he said the combination of red hair, blue eyes is only found in our world today in, in people groups that... that live or, or from Scotland and Ireland. My mom has red hair and blue eyes. Mm -hmm. So, so duh. Now sense. in light of that it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but so anyway, um all that to say, all that to say we see that the event of the Tower of Babel caused people to disperse mm -hmm. and isolation form the people groups that we see today. Right. Okay. Not evolution. I mean, there is there are factors in play there, but we are indeed one blood, one race, right. made in God's image. And unfortunately, we have very disobedient hearts, but we do have right. salvation through Jesus Christ, right. who rectifies uh, and, and, and does what we could not do on our own. Right. And with that... Right. And just remember that scientifically, it's been proven, there's only one race. Yes. The human race. And so we should learn to love each other, be kind, and show respect to one another because we're all related. We're all cousins. Yeah. So we're going to, um, and if we're all, you know, believers in Christ, we'll be spending a lot of time together in eternity. So a lot of time. We, that's like, I think we're supposed to learn how to get along down here. So <laughs> thank you guys very much. And don't, don't forget, I'll post a video for next week just for you to watch sometime that kind of rehashes and yeah. reviews some of this material from uh, this week and last week, but and then we'll come on the week after that. So thank you very much, thank you guys. Have, have a, a lovely evening. Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful, um, not large gathering. Right. right, right. <laughs> thank you. Right, right.